going into the combine, what do you think the main story is? Give me that. Give me that one. Well, I mean, well, I mean, look, it's, it's sometimes it's artificial, and this time it's authentic. It's the, it's the quarterbacks. I mean, I, I can't remember a year where we had this many that were talented, name brand, you know, name program guys we've known. The average Joe has known about all these guys for a long time. And it's not just the big five. I mean, we talk about the big five uh, with, with Rosen, Darnold, Mayfield, Allen, Lamar Jackson. But then even guys in that next tier, like Mason Rudolph and Luke Falk, have been you know, putting up numbers and been name brand college players for a long time. Um, so, so there's a lot of guys who are going to get a chance to, uh, to watch go out there and spin it. You know, and then on your Move the Sticks podcast with Bucky Brooks, you had Mike Vick on this week talking about Lamar Jackson, and he said that, uh, that Lamar Jackson reminds him of him from the scouting point of view. Would you agree with that assessment? Well, look, Mike came in two years before I started scouting, so obviously I was around Mike a lot, and I, I was with the Eagles when he came there. Uh, and spent time there. I would say Mike was a little bit more natural as a passer, um, just a little bit cleaner mechanically. Uh, but I mean, arm strength wise and, and just raw athletic ability. I, I think definitely think there are some similarities there. Okay. Um, and in, in terms of his viability of being a first round quarterback going in, what do you think DJ? I think he's got a good shot. I, I've been on record as saying, I think he's a top 40 pick. Um, you know, I, I don't think he gets out of the early portion of the second round because second round is usually where um, you'll see guys say, okay, maybe there's a little bit of risk involved here. He's not a, he's not a finished product by any stretch, but the talent is just too overwhelming. And you're not going to get, you're not going to get blown out of town for missing on a second round pick like you would in a first round pick. I still think there's a legit chance he goes in the bottom of the first round. Um, but I'd be shocked if he didn't go early second. Well, I mean, it's a copycat league here, and if uh, we just saw Nick Foles um, win a Super Bowl with RPOs being a central facet of the offense uh, without him having much of a threat of the R, of the P.O., I mean, yep. why not <laughs> Why not Lamar Jackson, DJ? Oh, yeah. yeah right? And that's what, I've, that's what I've said. Look, if this was the Dan Fouts era, you know, okay, people be dismissive and how's this going to work, but it's not. I mean, look at how the game has changed. Look at how Houston morphed their offense around Deshaun Watson and the success he was having is the, is the example people point to. We had a chance. We're going to have a podcast coming out. Um, I think it's early next month where we go and, and kind of focus on just one player and we interview a bunch of people. We, we talked to Lamar Jackson's high school coach who changed his offense that he had run. He's been coaching for 40 years, changed his offense for Lamar Jackson, was successful. And we talked to the coaches at Louisville who had Petrino had his offense. He'd ran forever. He gets Lamar Jackson. He, he changes it and morphs it around his skill set. So uh, that's what the NFL team is going to have to do. And it's, it's proven to be successful, um, but you're not going to be able to just call the existing plays you've always had. You're going to have to incorporate it and build around them, which is what any good coach should do at any level. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.